Can I just know who in the room has actually read through the aid modalities paper? Is there? So we have a few people in the room. Just to let you know, I mean, Catherine Paul, who's sitting right here, has dedicated huge amounts of time to this paper. It has great amounts of information, and I hope that you will take the time to read it. I've structured this presentation so it refers to tables in the paper, and there are copies of the paper that have been printed by the Secretariat. So please indicate if you do need um, printed copies of the paper. Um, I tend to take inspiration when I'm presenting because I'm not as strong as other presenters in the room from their models before. So I was tempted to show you the financial architecture with simply a blank screen and follow Tom Downing's model and say, this says that we don't know everything. But I decided that perhaps it might be useful for discussions to have a little bit of an image of the complex climate architecture. We've heard a little bit of the World Bank, the Climate Investment Funds, the Asian Development Bank, EBRD, and clearly, I mean, GCCA is one of the multilateral climate finance funds contributed by the EU, so the red arrow points to it here. We know that there will be, and Yoss spoke about this yesterday, the Green Climate Fund, which you really see as the top banner on this screen, which is this long-term finance commitment of $100 billion by 2020. And we really actually at this point can't say it's going to be particularly easy to generate that finance. It will be a difficult negotiating process. It's just beginning. But we do know that finance doesn't just come from donors. It comes from domestic budgets. It comes from market mechanisms. It comes from the private sector. The question is, with this complex architecture, there's clearly a burden on partner countries. And I have to confess, this slide was a little bit of a brainstorming yesterday afternoon, this morning. There are pieces to add to this. But the question is, what institutions are needed at the country level? Clearly, we talked about mainstreaming, so climate change and national development strategies. Also, climate change mainstreamed into sectoral and local programs. We need some sort of a climate change committee at the national level. We heard mention of the National Climate Change Committee in Cambodia. We've heard mentions of a number of different climate change committees. We need some form of enabling legislation, some operational strategies at the national, sectoral, and local level. We need ostensibly at least human resources, even if it's one person or two people, a climate change desk in each ministry. Ideally, it would be nice to have presidential or prime ministerial coordination and support for climate change at the highest level and some sort of a parliamentary committee. There's also a need for a finance or budget specialist and a tracking system. This can be some means to see climate expenditure in the budget, but also what climate change finance comes into country more broadly. And then this uh, has carried over the line, so uh, I apologize for the visual, but a UNFCC red focal point, a designated national authority for the CDM, and some mechanism to coordinate with donors. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list, and it's also not a prerequisite for starting climate change. You can start implementing climate change activities at the national level without all of this. You can also benefit from a lot more. But the basic image is there's a huge burden on partner countries of this new financial stream. So the question is, how do financial modalities and how do the way we operate actually enhance the experience of partner countries and of donors? And we have a long history of aid effectiveness. Now, while climate change finance isn't aid, it's not ODA, there's clearly been lessons learned about the delivery of external finance from the last 50, 60 years of aid delivery. And that goes from Monterey to Busan last year. And at Busan, there was actually a climate change building block on climate change financing and how you effectively deliver climate finance. But the key lessons are really ownership, respecting the ownership and the national plans developed by countries themselves, the fact that there needs to be alignment. Donors need to align behind national strategies. There needs to be harmonization, some degree of coordination. We need to aim at results and mutual accountability by both donors and recipients. So if we look, we have, and I'll just put this all out there so that you can see it, three major modalities. Direct support to projects, 
sector policy support programs which can either be e c specific procedures common pool resources or sector budget support or general budget support and they have different advantages when we think about budget support you're going through partner countries public financial management systems that means you're strengthening those systems rather than weakening them and in setting the initial criteria there's a potential for policy dialogue and policy influence and it can be in some ways less burdensome it requires you know less day-to-day -day management by donors but at the same time it can take a long time to get that funding in place and the Bhutanese who are sitting here in the room can attest to that I know that they have some EC visits coming up in the next few months to get their budget support aligned but clearly we've seen in all of our examples of budget support it takes longer to get operational um, in terms of project support there may be less opportunity for policy dialogue there can be very targeted support but it can be a great deal of work and uh, have high transaction costs so in terms of the GCCA we use all of these modalities general budget support sector project support sector budget support and the project approach and initially in some of the dialogue there was a sort of push towards either general budget or sector project support but if you actually look at the statistics over 82.4 percent of the finance is still in the project approach we have 8.1 percent is uh, sector budget support 5.5 percent is um, sector project support which is a sector program still using the project finance modality and then there's 3.9 percent which is general budget support this is an overview of the experience this is the first table in that paper that I was referring to and again I would urge you to go back but it does show actually that we have 28 activities receiving project support 20 of those are national activities eight of those are regional we only have two in a sector project program not receiving sector budget support we have four receiving sector budget support and four receiving general budget support so um, what are the insights and emerging lessons from our experience to date with each of these different modalities now as everyone has highlighted Ian just stated it's very early on in the process of the GCCA so these lessons are tentative some of them are simply with the planning for these modalities some of them clearly align with the lessons of aid effectiveness and that is we need to align with national priorities and support national initiatives with all of the different mechanisms whether it's project sector general we need to understand and support the institutions in country we need to work to achieve greater harmonization through joint financing programs we need to manage for results there can be some improvements in management practices particularly related to timing and that this finance can't be a standalone we heard yesterday from Guyana that some of their financing comes from the private sector from Digicel almost equal to the GCCA budget so this sort of encouraging leveraging of private sector financing encouraging other donors to come in and then you know really in terms of choosing the right aid modality they're not mutually exclusive and it depends on context so I'm going to go into each of these very very briefly I'm going to essentially show you the slide with the table that you should refer to in the paper I'm referring back to the paper a few times um, if you look in terms of aligning with national priorities and project support I was sitting this morning at breakfast with somebody from Vanuatu and they said actually the GCCA is implementing our Napa that's something that the GCCA should be doing your national adaptation plan of action is a national policy document that indicates where your priorities are in other cases there are plans currently underway and some of the GCCA activities are working to mainstream climate change into those plans whether it's the five-year plan of Cambodia or of Bhutan so the activities both build on existing plans and work to enhance the uptake of climate change in ones that exist in country these are this is all table two I'm going to encourage you to look in the paper for your country and each of the specific examples but they are all listed there okay in terms of understanding institutions there's a lot that goes on in the initial inception and formulation phase to understand the context in country 
What has been happening in a few countries, in particular recently Cambodia, is the financing of climate public expenditure and institutional reviews. Those who are in Bangkok heard Tom Bello and Paul Steele actually talk about these mechanisms. They're done jointly with UNDP, but essentially they look at what climate fiscal frameworks exist in country. What of all those institutions that we just saw in that circle actually exist? How do you sort of prioritize, and this is from Bangladesh, the effectiveness of finance, how do you enhance accountability, and how do you sort of mainstream the use of country systems? And what you end up getting out of these is a picture of the finance in country, what comes from donors, what's grants, what's loans, what comes from the government itself, and what comes from non-development actors or private sector. And also, I mean, really, where has expenditure happened? And what are the institutions that exist? And where are the gaps? So these are one mechanism being used. And this has only been done so far in six countries, four of which the GCCA has been peripherally involved. But they're one way to begin to understand institutions for the receiving of finance. In terms of lesson three on joint management and co-financing, um, we have a lot of cooperation. There was strong participation of UNDP in Cambodia. The sort of inception missions right now in Djibouti um, might be building on some of the work by the World Bank. The World Bank, the Agence Française de Développement, C4, all of these partners are involved in a lot of initiatives. But we do also have to confess that joint management and coordination isn't perfect. If we go into Cambodia right now, there is two major funds. There's the pilot program on climate resilience, supported by the ADB and the World Bank. And then there is the funds supported by the GCCA and a range of other partners, including Sweden, including Finland. Um, and I think that there's beginning to be dialogue between those partners. And it's recognized in country that those funds need to be aligned and there needs to be greater coordination. But joint management, co-financing, and coordination is a significant priority. Um, there's also a lot of contributions to um, multi-donor trust funds. And Bangladesh tends to be the example used here. We've already heard a lot about the Bangladesh Climate Change Resilience Fund. Um, and also, I mean, the Cambodia Climate Change Alliance Trust Fund is gaining support from other donors. Managing for results. This lesson really builds on the performance assessment framework and the paths. And these are particularly important when you're doing sector general budget support to get the indicators right, right from the beginning. And it's interesting because when we were doing the analysis for this paper, we actually looked, and when you look at the indicators, the general budget support programs seem to have process indicators. There's going to be a new policy, law, plan, regulation. Whereas the sector budget support they tend to have really concrete indicators based on implementation of an agricultural program that's going to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So it really says sometimes the difference between the general budget support and the slightly more targeted sector budget support focused on implementation. In terms of improving management, we've heard a lot about time delays. And I think that's a reality, as Ian highlighted, in any sort of development initiative. The biggest challenge is actually getting things off the ground. But certainly there are ways to communicate and enhance um, the identification phase and the time between identification and formulation. And there's ways to use that time appropriately in order to get institutions in place, key players in place, and coordinate. Um, and there needs to be regular consultation with all stakeholders. In terms of the sixth lesson, accessing other financial modalities, I didn't put a slide in here. I think that anyone who's been to one of our regional training courses, we extensively looked at all of the 25 existing multilateral, bilateral climate change funds. We looked at some of the cost benefit analysis and cost effectiveness analysis, some of the means to leverage private sector finance. So those sorts of training initiatives are one way in which we try to enhance capacity to access other means of finance. So the final piece I really you know, want to emphasize is that we don't have all the answers in terms of the aid modalities aren't mutually exclusive. In some contexts, for example, Guyana is a sector budget support program, but it actually has a project component. So sometimes you can use two or three modalities in country. Sometimes you can use a project modality in the short term 
to be able to build capacity to ultimately be able to accept general or sector budget support. So it's really about a dialogue with the GCCA. It's about understanding the context and country and selecting the most appropriate aid modalities. So we can discuss all of this in much more detail with country-specific cases this afternoon. So thank you very much.